Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Global Power BI User Group. Um, today, uh, we're going to have Marco Russo doing a presentation for us. And as you guys know, like uh, our community, uh, we plan we're trying to have like one monthly session. And this month, uh, Marco Russo got some time to present for us. Uh, we invite everybody to join our community and our Facebook group. And if you want to be part of our LinkedIn group also. Uh, we will probably gonna have be having like a session like with uh, Dustin Ryan. Um, uh, I'm still in contact with him, like to get like uh, uh, what is gonna be the topic. But uh, pretty sure probably he's gonna be talking about some DAX uh, formulas into Power BI, and we're gonna be providing the date. Hopefully that session is gonna be for November, but this is upcoming for uh, for our community. Um, and today uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna be talking about time intelligence power BI by Marco Russo. Um, Marco Russo, for those uh, most of you guys know Marco Russo, he's actively uh, related to data what a house relational multidimensional design, and also like Marco Russo is an author author of many books and power and related power BI. Also, uh, he's been a speaker for that, um, TED, Pass, and Summit and SQL Rally and SQL Bets. Uh, today we're going to have uh, this amazing session that he's going to be presenting for us. And Marco, I just hand it over to you and thank you for taking the time for present for the Global Power BI community. Okay, thank you very much. Let me just uh, enable the presentation on my screen. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's see. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Uh, Skype has it on time. Uh, can you confirm you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. OK, thanks. So we can go ahead. So uh, welcome. My name is Marco Russo. And the session today is about uh, time intelligence in uh, Power BI. Uh, so just, uh, I think, uh, um, Eric already presented me, so let me go to the next slide. And uh, I wrote a number of books. Uh, you can find uh, several uh, articles, tools, uh, and references to these uh, books uh, over SQLBI.com website. And uh, we can go straight to the discussion of uh, the topic today, which is uh, time intelligence. And uh, in reality, we uh, when we talk about time intelligence, we uh, relate it to anything that is related with the time, especially comparison and aggregation over time. But uh, we will focus on uh, Power BI mostly because in Power BI we have a number of challenges that we have to solve, um, other than the common ones that we have in any platform using DAX, uh, for example, like uh, Power Pivot and Analysis Services Tower. So. The initial part of this uh, speech will be about uh, Power BI specific problems with dates, uh, and then we will see a number of uh, uh, techniques that we can use in any um, tool using DAX, including Power BI, of course. So um, Power BI and dates. One uh, feature that we have in Power BI is uh, the uh, you know, most uh, more or less famous uh, auto date and die, uh, date time uh, feature that you have uh, in a time intelligence section of the options uh, of a data model, in the data load uh, model. So for each uh, model, you can enable or disable this auto date and time. And uh, what I will show you is that uh, this option is designed to solve a problem, but in reality, it solves a problem only for very simple data models. And let me show you how this works with uh, an example that I prepared in advance, uh, where we have a relatively simple data model uh, with only four tables. Uh, we have a table sales, uh, a table purchases, uh, and two tables product and customer who identify product uh, information that are shared across uh, sales and purchases. We have uh, the same product uh, that we buy somewhere and we sell to some other customer. And uh, for the sales, we have the customer table that identify uh, to which person we sold the product, uh, whereas for the purchases, uh, we don't have uh, uh, any, any information about the vendor, at least in this data model. Uh, every table, purchases and sales, uh, has two dates, order date and delivery date. And as you see, 
in this model we don't have a date table because we say okay let's see what we can do with the auto date and time feature so just to make uh, sure we uh, are on the right track uh, we go in the options dialog box of power bi and here in the data load we can see that uh, the auto date time is enabled let me disable this uh, for a moment so we can see what is uh, the uh, the additional uh, feature that is uh, um, enabled by checking that uh, that option in uh, the dialog box so i create uh, a very simple matrix here and i include uh, uh, for example the sales amount measure from the sales table uh, i will just increase the font so we can see a little bit uh, uh, more in uh, the, the screen available and I included the order date. When I included the order date, as you see, we have just uh, one row for each day where we have some uh, sales. Uh, we probably want to group data by year, by month, uh, but not having uh, uh, columns here and month, uh, this is not possible. And this is exactly where our feature uh, auto date and time uh, comes in help. If I go back to the dialog box and I enable the auto date time uh, checkbox, uh, as you see I did now. When I do the same operation, I drag and drop or I click enable order date here, I see the year here, and when I drill down, I see also the quarter, and I can see also the month, and I can see also the date. So basically what we have is a uh, hidden in the model there is an additional table that we don't see that has four columns year quarter month and day and this table is used to give me the experience of navigating across uh, the date with a hierarchy by year quarter and, uh, and month for example uh, just to make sure uh, you see that uh, I don't have a date table here and my model doesn't have any additional date However, if I would investigate with some other tool, I would discover that there is a hidden table that is just not shown here. And uh, how this hidden table works? Well, it is automatically created for each date that we have here. So let me uh, go back to the, um, to the report where we only have year and sales amount. And let me consider, okay, I would like to see not only the sales by year, but only the amount of purchase. So we have a measure purchase amount in the purchases table, and I try to include the same, uh, the same, uh, the, the same uh, table, the same uh, sorry, the same measure in the same uh, model. And as you see, this is not uh, working, or at least this is not providing me a useful information. I see the same number across. Uh, every single row every single year this is, and this is not what I want so what can I do at this point I can try to uh, well I can try to solve the problem by creating another here another matrix here side by side so I can include the purchase amount and the order date I can try to include the same measure so the same text sites here so I have something that more or less can be put side by side, and here we go. I have something that is similar to my other uh, report, but probably this is not very, very, you know, useful because if I drill down here, I don't have the same drill down action here, and I see two years here and here. So actually, this way of working is not very uh, comfortable. Moreover, I would also like to show you another potential issue that we have. So basically, we cannot mix the two. And what, what is the reason why when I put the purchase amount here, I don't see the data uh, split by year? If I go back to the um, diagram view, you can imagine that if I filter by order date, uh, order date is filtering uh, the quantity and the net price that are used uh, by the sales amount measure. But uh, this uh, filter does not propagate the right way to the purchases table. However, someone of you may have heard of the bidirectional filter that we can enable in an, a model. So if I go here, I can say, oh, look, I can enable a bidirectional filter, so this will magically solve my problem. And if I try to do that, actually, when I go back to my model, I see that there is something different here, 
But actually, this number looks strange. If you remember, when I created the, and let me create the other report here, when I included the order date and the purchase amount, and I include a larger font, you can see that the number displayed in purchase amount here, um, browsing data by uh, order date uh, of the sales uh, table does not have any correspondence with the purchase amount uh, uh, divided by the order date of the purchase uh, operation. So what is happening? Why we see this number that is uh, larger than the sales amount that we see for the same year? So why the purchase amount is a bigger number and different from what uh, we expect? Well, the explanation is that the bidirectional filter is propagating the filter from sales to product and then to product to purchases, but at this point without filtering by date. In other words, we are saying, and let me go back here, considering the sales amount in 2007, considering all the products that have at least one sale for 2007, give me the sum of these products for any date in a purchases table. So yes, because we restricted the number of products over time, probably we have a smaller number, but every year we see the purchases not only of 2007, but of 2008 and 2009 together for the same products that we sold in 2007, which is something that probably doesn't make any sense. So for this reason, my suggestion is to not enable the bidirectional filter in an easy way in a model that has a shared dimension or tables that uh, are shared with multiple uh, tables, multiple tables that have uh, measures, uh, it's better to enable this uh, uh, only when you need it in the DAX code. There is a function cross filter to do that. So we can go back to our initial uh, uh, model, but we still have the problem that now we are back to our initial issue. How can I uh, split the data uh, in the, uh, the, the right way? And here is the thing. The problem is that uh, every date has its own special hidden date table. So basically when I enable the um, auto date time feature, I am creating one, two, three, four different uh, date tables uh, that contain one row for each uh, day in the years where there are data in these dates. And uh, this doesn't make sense because I actually want to compare, most of the time, users want to compare different measures for the same set of dates, for the same range of dates. And in order to do that, we need to create a um, um, shared date table that we had to create manually. So my first uh, uh, step in order to do this is to disable the auto date and time feature here in the time intelligence section and then I can create in my model I have to add a table here which will contain the dates that I will share across sales and purchases. Uh, let me go back to the slides one second so we can just recap what we have seen so far. We said that uh, this uh, uh, slicing by date uh, um, is enabled by default, uh, but sometimes creates uh, too many tables. If you have uh, too many dates in your model, it is not very useful. It is useful if you have only one date and one table in your model, basically. Um, in all the other cases, it provides a number of issues that are uh, not exactly what we want to uh, do, because in most of the models we have multiple tables uh, with uh, data. So. In order to solve the problem, we had to create a date table. And in order to create a date table, we need to uh, use a, a technique to create this date table. And the best uh, option is having already a date table in our data source. This is often the case when you import data from uh, a data mart, a data warehouse, you may have a view in SQL to create this. You may have a, um, a script in M in uh, Power Query, in the query for uh, Power BI to do that. Or you can also think about uh, building uh, the stable in DAX. So we will see how to do this in DAX. And so now we go to the uh, Power Pivot model again. And uh, we go in the model and we create a new table. So by using new table, we can specify a function that uh, generates a table. We have different functions that we can use to do that. One is, for example, uh, calendar auto. And calendar auto automatically generates uh, uh, 
one row for each day in all the years where there is some data. But as you see, there is one problem here because the first date that has some data is 1910. Let me see if I can highlight this a little bit. No, probably no. Uh, so let me see, maybe yes. Okay, yes. Uh, I hope that you can see this enlarged. And uh, you see that here we have uh, uh, 1910 as the first date, but we know that we have the first sales in 2007. So what is happening here? It's happening that Calendar Auto is considering also the customer table that has the birth date uh, column that contains the birth date of our customers. And probably we have some customer that uh, has a birth date in the 1910. And all the years in the range of the minimum and the maximum are included. So the Calendar Auto uh, feature sometimes is not uh, very uh, easy to use for this. So I go back to my table date and I will call this table date first of all and instead of calendar auto I can write uh, uh, or I can use sorry uh, a function called uh, calendar and calendar is a function that has uh, two arguments. Uh, one is the first day and the second is the last day. Now I can write uh, for example date uh, 2007 1 1 uh, or, if I want to make it more dynamic, I could write here, year of uh, the minimum, sorry, of uh, the minimum of the sales uh, order date, because I know that the sales uh, is, the, is, the, is, the, is my main table. I want to use this for, for, uh, for the process. So, by doing this, I have the first uh, uh, year, and the last year will be a very similar, a very similar function where I will put not the minimum but the maximum and I will put uh, uh, December 31st uh, as the last uh, day. By doing this uh, I obtain the calendar, so just a column that has the date. Once I have this I have to extend this uh, by adding uh, uh, for example calculated columns. Uh, I need probably the year, the year is equal to the year of the date uh, date and uh, I probably also need uh, the month. The month uh, name will be equal to, there is a function that I can use, a format, a date, date, uh, and uh, MMM, which, uh, or 4M, so we have the extended name. But I also know that if I display the month name this way, it will be sorted alphabetically, so I need also another column that I will call month number, and the month number is equal to the month of uh, date date. And uh, why I'm doing this? Because I will hide this uh, column uh, to the user, but I will use this uh, month number to sort the column month using the sort by column feature. Once I do this, uh, what I obtain is a new table here date that I can join to my order date here in sales and the order date in purchases. Once I do that, uh, I can go back to my model, I can just uh, include uh, the year column from the date table here, and, uh, oh sorry, I have to include the year column in the rows, I should uh, mark the column as a non-aggregatable one, but uh, by the way, this is already working, and if I put the month here, I can also drill down and see the, the year, the month, uh, and of course I could do the same for the quarter and so on. This time, uh, the numbers that I see are correct, and uh, the slicing of the data is done correctly because when I filter one year here, I'm filtering a set of dates that applies uh, the same filter here in the sales table and in the purchases table. So, this is uh, the preferred way to use dates in a model in Power BI. Sorry. Okay, sorry guys, just some water. Okay, so what can we do now? Uh, you notice that uh, we have actually more than uh, one uh, date column in each uh, uh, table. We have order date and delivery date. Uh, we can use this uh, this way. We can connect also the delivery date here and here. Sorry, delivery date here and here. But as you see, between two tables, only one relationship can be active. What is an active relationship? It's a relationship that has a solid line connecting the two tables. When you see the dotted lines, like uh, this case, uh, 
the dotted lines identifies a case where the cross field, sorry, where the relationship is non-active. This checkbox cannot be enabled because if I do that, I have a problem because I would have two active relationships between the same tables. I could disable the relationship between order date and the date here, and once I disable this, I could make the relationship between delivery date and date the active one. However, um, we usually keep the relationship active uh, using the most common, the most used uh, relationship, and probably the order date is the, what we want to use by default in both uh, sales amount and purchase amount uh, measure. How can we use, however, the delivery date? In order to do that, we have to create a new measure. So we can uh, go to our report and say, OK, we want to see uh, what is the amount of delivered sales uh, in the same date. And in order to do that, we can do the following. We can create a new measure here. And we can call this uh, delivered sales, which is equal to, we have to use a function called calculate. We can uh, uh, call the same existing sales amount measure, but we transform this measure saying that we want to use the relationship that connects the sales uh, uh, table with uh, the delivery date column to the date table and the date column. Use relationship is a function that you see here. Let me highlight this. The use relationship function that you see here is a function that uh, actually is used to um, uh, change, just for this calculation, what is uh, the relationship that has to be considered the active relationship. So once uh, this relationship is active only for this calculation, we will see that uh, the calculation is the amount of, uh, say, of um, sales delivered and not ordered in that particular amount of time. So if I click on my uh, report and I included the delivered sales here, you will see that uh, in the same period I sold for this amount uh, 1,459,000, but uh, the amount of delivered is 1,410,787 dollars, which is a, a little bit smaller because in the same in the same year I received because I started my business in 2007. For that particular year, I delivered less than the amount that I received as orders. I have some back order that will be delivered in 2008. I can just uh, fix the format of uh, this measure. Just give me a second to fix this to two decimal points. So we have uh, the ability to compare Apple with Apple. And I, maybe I can also just remove this uh, and use two decimal points. OK, no way I can. Uh, currency general without the symbol. No way. Okay, sorry. I uh, I wanted to remove the symbol. I uh, don't remember what is the exit but it is not important. I think that the important thing is that uh, I can use uh, use relationship to attain this result uh, and to leverage on the relationship uh, to uh, do the calculation. And of course, I could repeat the same for uh, the uh, purchases table. So let me go back. Uh, to the slide, just to recap what we have seen so far. Uh, so we need a date table, and if we don't uh, have an existing date table in our data source, we can create this table in DAX. It is not necessarily the more efficient way to do that, but it's something that you can do. Uh, calendar Auto is uh, one function that automatically scans uh, all the date columns in your model and find the minimum and the maximum year, creating all the dates uh, in that period, uh, you can specify a different starting month uh, uh, rather than January if you have a fiscal year starting in July, for example, in this uh, in this slide. Um, but because Calendar Auto uses all the dates in your model, you may uh, decide to use Calendar. Calendar can get uh, two specific uh, dates, and you can specify the minimum, the maximum. You can specify date with the year of the minimum and the year of the maximum. Uh, uh, as I explained before, and you can also combine a minimum and a maximum of different uh, uh, tables in case you want to make sure that you get the first day and the last day in both tables. Now, um, what if you want to create this all um, in, in, in all of your models? One of the problems could be that uh, um, if you think about the problem, uh, 
you always created the same uh, uh, set of uh, columns in a date table, and you will spend also time by just uh, setting uh, properties like, oh, well, I want to hide this column, I want to format this column this way, I want to create this hierarchy, I want to uh, uh, sort the month uh, column by the month number column, and I measure that repeating this operation every time for a complex data table that don't, doesn't have only three columns, but maybe 10 or 20 columns, it's something that requires 10 to 15 minutes every single time. So my idea is that because every time I need a data table, why not starting a new project with a template that already has a data table already defined with all the properties? And for this reason, uh, this is just a work in progress. So if you go to this link, you will open uh, this uh, web page that I show you here, where you have a couple of files, uh, a PBAX file and a PBAT file. A PBAT is a template, uh, which is basically a file that you use to create a new project, uh, where uh, this new project uh, gets a copy of the content of that, uh, of that uh, template. So let me show you what happens uh, when I open this uh, data template PBAT file. As you see here, the file is relatively small, it's just a 41 kilobytes, because it's an empty file, it just has the definition of the, of the, of the data. And when I double click this uh, model here, I will open a new instance of uh, a new project in Power BI Desktop that uh, will have only the table date that I prepared, but look at how many columns I already have. I have a calendar, a fiscal year, and also a week year, and there are a number of uh, options that you can change. Um, the idea is that uh, this is a very long uh, DAX expression that generates the table, but the first uh, lines of this expression uh, represent the configuration, so basically defines the range of the years that you want to include, uh, from which country you want to get the holidays, uh, if you want uh, um, the calculation for weeks uh, in one of the many different standards that we have around the world, uh, and uh, so there is some documentation. It is still a work in progress, as I said. But uh, an interesting thing is that uh, uh, we have a calculation of Easter that is automatic, uh, and all the holidays that can be calculated uh, uh, as a relative date uh, between Easter and the day of the holiday, like, for example, Pentecost in Europe uh, or the um, Easter Monday or uh, Easter Friday that you may have in different countries that are bank holidays, uh, well, you will find here a column that contains a holiday name. Let me see if I found it. Uh, holiday name here, and if if the day is a working day or not. And the logic, if it is a working day or not, is also based on another parameter which defines what are the working days. In many countries, it's just uh, Monday to Friday, but there are countries where there are other definitions. And as you see here, this case is a case where I populated the date table with the U.S. holidays, but there are other 10 or 12 uh, uh, countries already included here. And of course, it's an open source project. It's open to contribution of people who want to add their own uh, definition of holidays and maybe improve the code if you want to contribute or just give a feedback about what you would like to see uh, more. Now, the idea is that when I start a new project this way, I have my date table, and now I just have to import uh, new tables from other data sources. This is the idea of uh, creating a standard date table that I can use in all the projects. OK, so um, at this point, uh, let me just check uh, if uh, there are questions so far. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> I see already someone is already using the data template and very, very glad to hear that. Thanks. Okay, so next uh, slide. Okay, I already shown you that uh, if I have a column that contains names, you have to sort uh, that column by a number using the sort by column option. And uh, what happens if we have multiple dates? Well, in reality, we have two options. One option is using the relationships that I've shown you. Uh, so using a single date table with several relationships. The other option is that of uh, using multiple dates. And let me show you this option with uh, another example. Just a second. So. If I go back uh, to my model, 
I can create a new page and uh, I will do a quick operation. So here, this is my data model. Um, in this case, I will remove the relationship from delivery data because I want to show you what uh, could be the idea of having multiple date tables. So now I have my data table here. I could create a copy of this table. Uh, I can go here and I create a new table, delivery date equal to date. And then I have my model with the delivery date here, which is identical to the previous one, but I still have to hide this column and sort the month column by month number. And then I can go to my model. I have my delivery date, and now I can connect the delivery date here to this uh, connection here and to this connection here. Okay, my delivery sales measure now uh, doesn't make sense anymore because now I have the sales amount, which is a single measure that can be browsed across two days. The order date, let me, you know, arrange this. This is the order date now and the delivery date. So this means that in my new report, or in my old report, if, if you want, I can fix this and I can remove the purchase amount. What I have here is this. I have in the rows, I have the order date, and I can put in the columns the delivery date. So for example, I can get the year and put the columns in the columns of the delivery year. Now this report makes sense. If you think about this, we're seeing that the exact amount of sales ordered in 2007 but delivered in 2008 is this number. And the same for ordered in 2008 and delivered in 2009 and so on. We can extend this by including the month, of course. We can include the month of the delivery here and the same for the order date. The at this point, we go and drill down for the columns and for the rows, and here we go. You see the same for January, February, March. Now we are drilling down in 2007. So as you see, it is possible to do this analysis, but only, only when you want to do an analysis of, uh, um, uh, we call this a, a correlation measure. We want to correlate two dates in the same report. So the same measure has to be split across two different dates. In this particular report, with this particular matrix, having multiple dates makes sense. But in my experience, this is just maybe 2, 3, 4% of the cases. Most of the time, people don't want to have multiple dates in the model, but want to have a single date table and one measure for each possible combination of calculation and data that makes sense in your model. When you have uh, 20 measures and five dates, uh, you may potentially have 100 different combinations, but those that make sense are usually 30, 40, 45. Most of the times, every measure makes sense with only one date, maybe two, hardly with five, if you have five dates. So this is my experience, and this is what I would suggest you to consider to do in your model. OK, so now uh, the next step is uh, how we can aggregate, uh, date, uh, aggregate uh, measure, aggregate data over time. So once we have a date table, so we start from the idea we have our date table, but in reality, what I will show you will work also with the auto date and time uh, feature. Once we have the date table, we can create calculation uh, to aggregate and compare data over time. Let's start with the aggregation. Let's start with uh, aggregation over time, like the year to date. And uh, in order to show you how the time intelligence uh, function works, because the time intelligence functions are DAX functions that simplify the way you can obtain this calculation. And uh, uh, how it works. In practice, uh, by generating uh, filters over the date table, actually over the date column of the date table. This is the only thing that these functions do. And it is important that you understand that, that a time intelligence function is just a filter, because if you realize that, you will be able to write a custom function every time the available time intelligence functions don't do what you really need to do. Sometimes it happens that you have a specific requirement, and for some reason, the standard behavior is not what you want. So in order to do that, 
we will start uh, our implementation of the year-to-date calculation, um, creating this uh, calculation without using the time intelligence function we have in DAX. So we will use uh, basic DAX functions to do the calculation. So let me remove the delivery date at this point. I don't need it. Uh, uh, I don't need it uh, for going forward. And I will just uh, consider the year-to-date calculation in this case. So I want to create a column here, set amount year-to-date, where I will see for each month, but even for, even for, for each day, if I scroll down, the total starting from the 1st of January uh, for each month. And of course, when I go to, to a new year, I want to restart from scratch. Now, let's start to face this, uh, this problem, creating uh, um, an expression that uh, is a little bit simpler than what I, what I uh, will do now. So um, the idea is that I, I start my sales YTD calculation will be a calculation that uh, will uh, transform my sales amount. How? Well, let's start with a simpler problem. Let's consider to create a calculation that regardless of the initial filter context, always uh, calculate the sum of the sales uh, between the 1st of January and the 15th of May 2015. How can I write this? Well, I can write this uh, by writing uh, something like a date uh, Data should be oh sorry order date order oh, let let me rename the the column order date I, I prefer to use date because otherwise it's always too long so let's rename this to date so my date data has to be uh, greater than or equal to date uh, uh, 2015 uh, one one and uh, the other condition is that the date uh, should be also less than or equal to date uh, 2015, uh, 5, 15. So if I do this, uh, this very simple calculation will apply a filter over the date column in the date table, and because of that, uh, my calculation states YTD shows, sh should show, let me check why this is not working, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Let me check one thing. Probably I have to fix... Uh, one problem. Let me check if the calculation is correct here. Probably something like this. No. Very good. So let me check what I'm doing wrong. So here I have this. I have this. Oh yes, that's a problem. I'm using a 2005 to or 2015. Let me remove this. This doesn't make sense. As you see, we have data from 2007, 2008, and 2009. So let me use 2007. Otherwise, I will not see anything because I don't have data for 2015. And as you see, we have here something that is... Uh, um, sorry, one second. Uh, one second. So, as I said, um, we have this calculation that is the sum of January, February, March, April, and the part of May. Now, if we have time, if we had time, we would uh, go here and drill down uh, in, a, in a deeper way. So, we could include uh, the date here in the month uh, and uh, drill down this at the, at the day level. And if you go here and you sum all the numbers, you will see that the number that you see here is exactly the sum of all the days between the 1st of January and the 15th of May, which is this number here, okay? Uh, but let's trust me, and this number is correct. However, you can, uh, you can uh, imagine that uh, this is not exactly what we would like to do, so we, we don't want to create a calculation that is fixed, we want to create a calculation that is dynamic, uh, and how can we make our calculation dynamic? Well, if you look at this code, I could change two things, these two dates that are now fixed. So what can I do? Well, I can read from the current filter context the range of dates, and in particular, I'm interested in the last day of the current period. So if I'm showing a month, the last day of the month, if I'm showing a year or a quarter, the last day of the quarter or of the year. And I can save this number 
here in a variable, so last day in selection, for example, could be equal to the maximum of day to date. Now, this number could be used exactly in this part of the calculation, of course, uh, after you write also return. is the use of the variable that we can do in DAX. Uh, once we do that, however, if I don't change the first, uh, you see that now the year to date is working for 2007, but uh, when, I, um, when I see 2008, uh, I continue to sum data from the 1st of January 2007. Why this? Because uh, I had to reset my calculation in 2008, 2009. So what I can do, I can write uh, the year of the last day in selection here instead of 2007, so that also this year will be calculated automatically, in, uh, dynamically. And this way, I obtain my year-to-date calculation. So what I'm trying to show you is that uh, a time intelligence function is basically um, a list of uh, dates, a set of filters. We could write this filter this way, filter all uh, date, date, uh, with uh, this uh, and uh, this. Why not? This is the same. This is absolutely the same calculation, no differences. And why I'm showing you this? Because if you consider the filter, which is a single table function returning, returning a list of dates, we can obtain the same result using a simpler time intelligence function that is called dates between. Dates between, like every every time intelligence function is just a function that filters dates in a column. So dates between will never generate uh, dates that uh, don't exist. We'll, always, we'll only uh, show existing dates filtered between two different uh, uh, limits, first day and last day. So if I write dates between this way, I obtain the same exit result of the filter all that you have seen before. And if I click enter, the, the, the visual result is always the same. But you can understand that internally, instead of writing a filter with uh, all data, I'm writing this between, which is still a function that returns a table that filters the existing values in a column. An easier way to write this between when you want to obtain the, the year-to-date calculation is writing dates uh, YTD. Dates YTD is a special time intelligence function that gets only one argument, the date, the date column, and it automatically generates the dates between with the remaining arguments that you see here. So it gets the last day in uh, the current filter context, and it gets the first uh, year of the last day in the current filter context. So by writing this code, uh, this point I can also remove the variable, this is the simplest uh, calculation that you can write to obtain the dates here to date. But remember, internally, you are still writing a filter. You still have the same performance of a filter written like I wrote the filter before. I'm filtering a list of days that includes the dates that I want to compute. And if you want to use another function to do the same calculation, there is another version of this. Instead of using calculate, you can write a total YTD. And instead of writing dates YTD, you write just a date to date. So this internally is just what we call syntax sugar. So it's, it's just another way to write index, a shorter syntax that internally generates a longer syntax, the one that you have seen with calculate. If you want to be able to customize uh, the calculation, I prefer the syntax with calculate because it is more clear what you are doing with the calculation. And of course, uh, you have here, instead of year to date, you have quarter to date, you have month to date, uh, and these are the calculations that we have. Year, year to date, quarter to date, and month to date are predefined in DAX and available to you. DAX doesn't provide you weak calculation, as I will mention uh, later. These are the functions that we have. So let me go back to the slide one second. We have seen that we can create calculation for a specific uh, range of dates using an explicit filter. We can write this using dates between, because dates between is a time intelligence function that uh, simplifies the syntax of a filter. And then we have seen that we can customize, we can uh, create uh, the parameters 
for dates between or the filter that we wrote before. And finally, we can simplify the code by using the time intelligence function dates ytd. Uh, instead of using dates ytd in a calculated statement, you can use total ytd. And total ytd uh, can be used as specifying uh, uh, just the date column in the date table. Okay, so this is uh, what we have uh, in our data model and in, in, in our example. Now, if you are using Power BI, however, you have to be aware of uh, one detail, that uh, it's important that in order to make it working, in order to be able to use these functions, the relationship that connects the date table to your, um, to your uh, table with, uh, with the data has to be a date uh, table. In case it is an integer value, sometimes you have, uh, you have uh, a data sources where a date is expressed as 2008-0101 to express the 1st of January 2008. So in other words, you have an integer key that represents, uh, um, um, uh, that, that represents a date. In that case, uh, you have to uh, do a, a small workaround in Power BI that is described, uh, I hope I have the link uh, to, the, to the article here, uh, basically, we don't have a way in Power BI to say, oh, this table is a date table, because this is what is required to enable the time intelligence functions even when the relationship is an integer key. In this link, uh, in this article, you will find a description of what you have to do in order to solve the problem. Uh, and. Uh, better here. So if you go in this, uh, in this article, Time Intelligence Powered by Desktop, you will find an example and a description of the solution that uh, enables you to create this artifact in the model that uh, creates uh, a sort of Marcus date table in Power BI, even if we don't have this feature in Power BI. Remember, this is important only when your data don't have a date column, but have an integer column to represent uh, a date. Okay? So, the next... Uh, um, let me go back to the slides, because uh, I want to also cover another set of... Uh, of uh, uh, examples, which is the comparison between periods. But uh, remember that when you use the uh, time intelligence functions in DAX, you have to use the date column of the date table. In case you, you use uh, the wrong parameter, for example, the date column in the sales table, in the purchases table, these functions don't work because they don't remove the filter from the date table and uh, the number that you see is uh, th the same of the original calculation that you had. In case you have a fiscal year, there are additional uh, parameters to specify what is the last day of the fiscal year. This is, for example, for the total YTD and the, and the dates YTD, you have the third and the second argument. But then uh, we enter into the last uh, section of this presentation, which is uh, how we compare different periods. And uh, the idea this time is that instead of uh, starting from the DAX code and then looking at the a time intelligence function in DAX, and of course you have a larger set of time intelligence function. Uh, I, I will not give you the list. You can just go in the documentation and see all the other functions. But uh, basically, for aggregation, uh, year to date, quarter to date, and month to date are the functions that you have available with a few differences. We have more to say when uh, we discuss about uh, the comparison. But discussing about comparison, we want to start uh, from the easy way, uh, because uh, there is something uh, more difficult to write in DAX in this case. And let me sh show you the example. So this uh, same period last year is a function in DAX uh, that uh, will show the, the, the correspondent period one year back. So let's do the same uh, calculation in our model. Here we have our sales YTD. We'll remove the sales YTD for a moment here. And let's create a sales previous year, sales uh, last year, previous year, same thing, where I write a calculate sales amount, and I write here same period last year. And of course, date, date. This is the same code that you have seen in the slide. 
I just uh, specify that I want to see this in dollar and I include this uh, here. Let me write in dollar also sales amount because uh, this way they will be very similar. Okay, now let me see if we are calculating something correctly. So the January 2007 and February 2007 were 101.097.12 and the same number is here. Same number for February, February 2008, report uh, February 2007. So far so good. However, um, let me let me try to do another calculation. Let me try to do another calculation, which is, for example, sales uh, uh, previous month, okay? Which is a calculator, and uh, this time uh, I have to write uh, something that uh, I would like to write the same period the last uh, month, but I don't have this. But uh, let me tell you a secret: the same period as here internally is a generic uh, shortcut for. Uh, uh, a function called date add. Date add, remember, date add is a time intelligence function, and because it is a time intelligence function, it's just a filter of existing uh, dates. Uh, this is an error that I see common, uh, thinking that the date add uh, generate a new date. No, if the date is not in the date table, it will be not uh, uh, be returned by date add as a table function. So date add has a first argument, which is the date column that you want to filter. Then uh, the number of intervals and the interval that you want to apply as an offset to the existing uh, selection over those dates. And uh, when you write the same period last year, you're writing this. You're writing uh, uh, date add, uh, date date uh, minus one year. And in fact, if I write this, uh, you can see that my sales PM uh, calculation, which is now not uh, yet uh, the uh, previous month, uh, will return exactly the same value of uh, the same period last year. So I'm demonstrating that uh, date add uh, with minus one year is the same. But let me write minus one month. As you see now, let me click here. Now we can see here that February has the value of January, March has the value of February, and so on. So this should not surprise you, but if you think for a moment, uh, this is a filter function. Initially, you have uh, 28 days in February 2007, but you see the result of 31 days. Now, think for a moment about how you will write in DAX uh, the code to write uh, this filter. The code will not be just three or four lines of code. The code will be something will be something much more complex. So, actually, having the time intelligence function is especially useful when you have to compare different period of time. But of course, these functions are based on the notion of a standard calendar. And for this reason, when you want to compare calendars based on weeks, you will not be able to use these functions because these functions only apply offsets over days, months, quarters, and years. They already uh, infer that uh, if you select, uh, for example, 28 days in February, you may have to get uh, 31 days. Uh, the same way as you starting from 31 days, you have to get uh, 28 days if you go back to a month that has a lower number of days. And how this works, there is some heuristic in the algorithm implemented by Microsoft that uh, checks whether you have an entire month selected, then it means that uh, the target, the result uh, should contain an entire month too. Uh, otherwise, only the individual days are selected. In fact, if I include in the date table, for example here, uh, let me go in the date table and add another column with the day of week equal to uh, format of date date uh, e, for example. So you see that we have the name of the day of the week. I will use this as a filter here, and I will include uh, the day of week here. At this point, I select the Monday, Sat, Monday, Tuesday, and uh, Wednesday. Okay. Now, as you see, the numbers are completely wrong because the assumption that we made is no longer valid. We are just selecting a few days, and those days are translated in the previous month, so we no longer have uh, something that makes sense. Remember, 
these functions work when the entire month or the entire quarter is selected. If you have something that selects a, you know, a subset of them, then the translation is the same day in the previous month. At this point, February has 28 days. It will never show days in January that are beyond the 28th of January. And if you think about the problem, and if you think about how you will solve it, okay, you can figure out what is an algorithm, but then you have to implement this algorithm in DAX using the standard DAX function that we have seen before. So what are the functions that we have in DAX to do these calculations? Let me go back to the slides. Sorry, we were here, so we have seen the same period last year. Uh, same period last year can be combined with dates YTD. Every time you have a dime intelligence function that gets a date a column, in reality that date column is a date a table too. So you can get the result of a time intelligence function and use it as an input of another time intelligence function. The same period last year is just a shortcut for date add. And date add is a very flexible function that applies an offset to a period that could be year, quarter, uh, month, and day. Another function we have is parallel period, and parallel period uh, has a name that is similar to same period last year, but in order to explain it, the easiest way for me is to show you, so let me remove this uh, uh, filter here, so we, we restore a, a correct working of this. So let me create another measure here called uh, sales uh, pre-parallel period uh, year equal to calculate of the sales amount where I write parallel period of date date. The syntax is very similar to uh, date add, but if I go back one year, you will see that uh, for the first year it's always blank. So let me check this and set the currency to United States and include this here. So the, the, the first is the same, but look at this. You see that in 2008, uh, the number is always the total of the 2008. So the number that you see here is the total, the grand total of the 2000, sorry, uh, I, I, uh, sorry, of the 2007, of the previous year. So the number here at any level is the total of the previous year. Now, you may, see, you may think, why should I need it? Well, I show you an example. If I include the year to date, it would be useful to compare the year to date with the total of the previous year so that you obtain, for example, the percentage of previous year, which is equal to divide of sales YTD with the sales previous period, this one. This is probably displayed as a percentage, and of course, this percentage is something that tells you, oh, we are in September and we reached the 59.53% of the total of the previous year. So probably you will never display um, the result of parallel period like I'm doing here, just for educational purposes, but you will use this number in usually the denominator of a fraction like uh, a KPI that you may want to use in your, uh, in, your, uh, in your report, for example. So this is an example of the usage that you may have. Now, what if we don't have the time intelligence function that we need? Well, we could use the running total, for example. The running total is not a time intelligence function that exists, but we have seen that if I create my filter manually and I simply don't put the you know the initial filter, I get all the dates less than or equal to the maximum of the current filter context, I will get the running total. So this was, if you remember, the same number that I had at the beginning until I fixed the, the beginning of the period for the year to date, resetting the year of the of the uh, initial period in dates between. So I will not repeat this demo. The last uh, calculation is the moving annual total. The moving annual total is something that is easy to calculate with the function dates in period. We can uh, create uh, this calculation in our model so we can uh, have an idea about how it works. So I will create here my measure sales uh, uh, moving annual total equal to calculate of uh, sales amount. And I write dates in period. Dates in period has... Uh, 
The first is always the date column that we want to filter. Remember, we are filtering data. Then I write the max date date because I want to get the last day in the current filter context, the last day of the month or the last day of the quarter that I'm displaying. I specify a number of intervals. I want to go back one year. I could do this for quarter, for month, for whatever. But this is the moving annual total, which means that with this number, let me fix this, with this number I can obtain this. I can uh, have a number that at the beginning is identical for the first year to the year to date. But then if I look at the number in January, February, what is February 2008? February 2008 is the sum of all the months from March 2007 to February 2008. So every time I have the last 12 months. So dates in period automatically manages uh, the calculation of the right range of dates uh, that we need to obtain exactly this kind of calculation. Okay. So I think uh, uh, we are just in time. Uh, and uh, as you have seen, first of all, we have to create a date table. Then we have to use DAX to the calculation. But if we had the right data model and we know the DAX code, we can also create custom functions for a special calendar, even managing weeks, for example. You will find on the internet the articles to manage weeks. Uh, just give you a quick pointer. If you search for a week-based calculation in our website, there, are, there is an article that is just uh, uh, week-based time intelligence in DAX, uh, which uh, shows a calculation that exactly provides this kind of uh, calculation over weeks, uh, rewriting all the time intelligence functions in DAX. So thank you very much for attending. I know that uh, we are just <laughs> uh, out of time now, but uh, uh, if you have any questions, maybe you can write. I, I, unfortunately, I have to go in one minute, uh, but if you have any question, uh, otherwise I will follow up uh, in the Facebook uh, uh, page of the user group. Perfect. Thank you, Marco. And it was a really good session and a lot of good information in there. And uh, I'm going to be putting the video on YouTube uh, uh, for the Global Power VR yeah. community channel so people can Thanks. review and go back to the video. Thank Thanks. you, Marco. Send me, send me the link by email when you can so I will also promote it in my channel. Sure. Thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank, thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you all.